You won't see food prices like this on the high street. Heavily subsidised supplies are loaded into a van and taken to one of the most deprived areas of Nottingham. The spiralling cost of living has already forced this charity and the housing association it works with to rethink what food to sell. People are often turning away root vegetables and vegetables in general to the extent that even something you naturally think is quite easy to cook like a potato, they will say they just don't have a gas cooker anymore. So we are needing more things like tinned items so people can just open it and eat it. That's the extent. And not cook it? Yeah, and not cook it. And it seems there's no let up in sight. New analysis predicts inflation could reach 18.6% in January. That's due to huge hikes in the cost of energy. October's energy price cap is now expected to reach more than £3,500. In January, it's forecast to rise to more than 4500 And then in April, to nearly 6000 The mobile supermarket is heading to Brewster's estate. According to the Think Tank Resolution Foundation, families on low incomes like many here will have to reduce spending three times as much as those in high income households. Janet Crofts has already made changes to try to save money. She retired in January and has her daughter and two young grandchildren living with her. Well, I'm not cooking so much now. Um, trying to turn the lights off. Um, but what else do you cut down on? Um, I mean, thank God for the good weather, then I haven't got to have my dryer on. And you can't get much washing when you've got two babies in the house and they, I mean, you're washing every other day. You say you're not cooking as much, so what, no. what are you eating? Sandwiches. Does it keep you awake at night? Yeah. Might get an hour's sleep. Just worrying? Yeah. Two apples. In October, all UK households will get a £400 discount on their energy bills and some low-income families will get an additional £650. But now even energy companies are saying that isn't enough and that's echoed by the local housing association here. It will be a help, I'm sure it will, but it's, but it's just a drop in the ocean, isn't it? It's, it's a one-off payment. People need more long-term help. Oh, that one is, I didn't get this. Enid Kabanda is a regular at the mobile supermarket. Most of the expenses here is 50p, 20p, so it's going to work out better for me. For £5, you do a lot of shopping. Despite the financial pressures, Enid, like any parent, wants to provide a normal childhood for her son, Ty. He starts secondary school in September, and she's already wondering how she's going to pay for his new uniform. Many of us have installed smart meters to help us cut down on energy costs, but for Enid, the constant reminder of how much she's paying has come to haunt her. It is, it is really scary because as soon as I go out, now after two hours I'll come in and it's already two pounds, and you're thinking, I'm not cooking, I'm not doing anything. And how does that make you feel? It makes you really anxious. So you've really got down to thinking in detail about every electrical appliance you've yeah, got. Yeah, yeah. Whether you can switch Which one works off. more, which one work doesn't. I know the kettle does because I've switched on the kettle and I watched it going up until it finished. I know the kettle does. But then I'm trying to work out the fridge. But now I think, you see now, it's 78. It's nothing now. You're realising how are they working it out? Life for many on the Brewster's estate is already a struggle. <laughs> Janet Scotts has little faith that a new Prime Minister will make things any easier. What would your message be to, to, to the government in terms of how people like you are going to be impacted by this big hike in price of energy? I care about the people, because none of them do. Whoever gets in, they don't care about people like us. No, they're not, they're not bothered. They're not bothered at all. Both Conservative leadership candidates say they do care and plans to tackle the cost of living crisis will be announced once they're in office. Ofgem will announce the new price cap on Friday. Well, let's go now to our political reporter, Serena Barker-Singh, who's in Westminster. Serena. So on that inflation prediction, Cathy, um, what's interesting about it is that it incorporates Liz Truss' policy on how she will 
tackle the cost of living crisis. So there's two policies that she's suggested in her bid to become the next Prime Minister. That's cutting green energy levies and cutting VAT. And, and Citibank say they've already baked that in. But they also say that she will have to go much further. She will have to spend at least £40 billion. That's their estimate. Um, and she's softened her stance on how she wants to deal with this cost of living crisis. She originally said she wanted to uh, deal with it through tax cuts, not, as she says, handouts. But she's softened and she says that she will address it in an emergency budget. Now, the problem with an emergency budget is that it usually has to be looked at um, before by the government's independent forecaster to update on the economy before a budget can go ahead. She says there isn't time, that takes about 10 weeks, and people need help immediately. Um, she also says that a targeted fiscal, fiscal event like the one that she wants doesn't require that kind of forecasting. Labour says the sums really do need to add up. We need an emergency budget. We should have had that months ago to deal with the cost of living crisis. But the OBR is there to make sure that money is spent wisely and properly. So, of course, you need the OBR in place for that. And I think that's why there's been such a reaction to Liz Truss's proposal that she's going to just put that to one side. But more important than that, what we need to hear is what are you going to do about the cost of living crisis? The other candidate in this race, Rishi Sunak, has also been critical of Liz Truss. Um, a campaign person on his team actually told me that Rishi Sunak would never and has never had a budget without an OBR forecast. Uh, they've also described the plan as irresponsible. Serena Barker Singh, thanks very much for joining us. Well, we did ask to speak to a supporter of Liz Truss's campaign, but no one was available. But we are joined by the Conservative MP Mark Harper, who is Chief Whip under David Cameron and who is now backing Rishi Sunak. Uh, of course, Mark Harper, Rishi Sunak is best known as a man who spent £70 billion on furlough during the pandemic. If that 18.6% inflation forecast is anywhere near accurate, would you expect you know, a similar emergency response? I wouldn't expect an, a response of that scale, but I would expect a response which does deal with the concerns that were expressed in that package you ran there from Janet and Enid, um, both of whom, from the sounds of your report, are not on very large incomes. And we need to make sure that we help people like that get through the winter, which is why the, pa the, the plans that have been set out by Rishi Sunak, I think, are the right ones. He recognises that you've got to make sure you deal with people who are on lower incomes. You can't do that through tax cuts because they don't earn enough tax to, to benefit. You've got to help them directly. And he's already set out how he would do that. And he said once the uh, Ofgem set the price cap this Friday, he'll be able to set out some more specific right. detail, which hopefully will put people's minds at rest. But you've said 70 billion on furlough. It's not going to be of that scale. But I mean, the Ecotricity founder, for example, is talking about 10% of the cost of the pandemic. Well, that's 410 billion was the pandemic. So we're talking about tens of billions of pounds, aren't we? Well, look, first of all, I'm not surprised that energy companies um, want to be subsidised by the taxpayer, but I don't think we should listen to them too much. I'm focused on helping consumers. Uh, they're the people that need help, and it's people at the lower end that need uh, of, in of the income scale that need help. That's what Rishi has said he would focus on. In terms of the scale, uh, we've already uh, set out a package, which Rishi did when he was Chancellor, that amounts to £37 billion. What he said is we're now expecting energy prices in October to be higher than he was expecting when he set that package out. So there will be more help required. Right. Um, and then you have keep things under review. The Conservative Party has to remain rooted in reality. We've got to look at the situation that faces us and deal with that, not necessarily the situation that we right. would like to be facing. And what do you think is the scale of the hardship that people will be facing if those billions of pounds are not forthcoming? Well, well look, it's very clear. We, we set out a, a package uh, earlier this year, which she did when he was Chancellor, which meant that for those on the lowest incomes, uh, but disabled people, people on means-tested benefits, including people, by the way, who are working really hard but don't earn a lot of money, that, then they would get help that covered almost all of the increase in the energy price. For people who are better off, not, not rich, but better off, they have some help, but they have to bear some of the costs themselves. And I, I think that's a good approach. So I would hope that we were able to help those who have the least 
uh, to cope with this rise in energy prices. And that's where I want the focus to be. But, it, but if said, Rishi Sunak got... isn't successful, and the polls certainly indicate that he's not going to win this contest, do you agree with some of your colleagues who are warning that under Liz Truss's plans, people risk ending up on the streets? There could be social unrest. Well, look, first of all, I don't think the polls are right. I, I've certainly had a much better response when I've been talking to our members. And I do remember back to the 2015 election when I was told that uh, we weren't going to win that and it was all over and Ed Miliband was going to be prime minister and that didn't happen. So I'm going to keep fighting for the candidate I believe in because I think he's got the right message. And I think in the end, whoever wins this contest is going to have to recognise the reality of the situation. I think Rishi's plans are rooted in reality, recognise the challenge that's going to be facing the new Prime Minister on the 6th of September. And that's why I'm backing him, because I think he's got a plan that deals with the, the challenge facing the country. And I think that's what people want in their Prime Minister. But keeping you rooted in reality, he's very unlikely to win. And what, therefore, does a trust premiership instill in you? Are you, are you fearful of it? Well, look, for, first of all, I've been talking to lots of members and I've been to a number of hustings and I'm simply not finding that's the response on the ground. So you'll have to forgive me for not necessarily believing the polls. I've, I've you know, seen that before when polls haven't turned out to be uh, true. But look, whoever becomes prime minister, and this is a contest, they're going to have to deal with the situation as, as we face. Uh, and I think Rishi's, the first reason why I'm backing him is I think he's got the right plan to deal with the challenge facing the country. He's being honest and straightforward about it. Uh, and I think that's what we need. We need to be okay. honest with people about the challenge. That's how you get trust back in the government. Uh, and that's what I think is required, given, given what was set out clearly in your package. Mark Harper, thanks very much. Patrick Minford is Professor of Applied Economics at Cardiff University and a former advisor to Margaret Thatcher. He's been cited by Liz Truss to vindicate her plans to cut taxes. He has doubts about the Citigroup forecast. And I began by asking him why. Well, you know, um, there's many elements at the moment going on in the projections of prices. First of all, commodity prices are now starting to fall. And uh, gas prices, we've no idea what they'll be. Uh, of course, that's possible. They could be very high, in which case this could happen. Obviously, we just don't know at this point exactly what the commodity environment will be like. So uh, if inflation the, the... were to soar to such eye-watering levels, would you then think that, you know, tens of billions of pounds of taxpayers' money should be spent on, on what Liz Truss called, rather dismissively, handouts to help people through the winter? Well you know, you, you need to, to factor in the fact that benefits uh, for, for households that are on benefits will be indexed to inflation. So the question will be uh, whether they'll be indexed sufficiently in time to deal with the, the, the costs. And there's a case, obviously, for bringing forward the indexation in real time. Well, let's zero in on, on the tax cuts um, that are being proposed by Liz Truss, because the Sunak team says that it's impossible to deliver tax cuts and help with energy bills on the scale that Liz Truss has promised without, and I quote, increasing borrowing to historic and dangerous levels, putting the public finances in serious jeopardy and plunging the economy into an inflation spiral. And former Cabinet Minister Michael Gove has said that Liz Truss has taken a holiday from reality. Your response to those two quotes? Well, this is, this is absolute nonsense, in fact. I mean, we are a major state with a major economy and we are able to borrow on international markets at extraordinarily low interest rates. So, of course, the, we have to observe um, fiscal rectitude and that means in the long run the debt ratio has got to be brought down to normal sorts of levels that are safe and that I think there's every prospect of doing and so there's absolutely no reason to to say we can't borrow I mean the role of government is to borrow as necessary to fund its operations in in particularly deal with shocks and so to say that I mean after all this comes pretty pretty weirdly from a a bunch of ministers that just borrowed 500 billion to deal with the pandemic. But aside so from the borrowing... So the idea we can't borrow is nonsense. But aside from the borrowing, tax cuts would fuel inflation, wouldn't they? Because you're putting money back into people's pockets, presumably to try and to persuade them to, to spend money, and that would fuel inflation. No, that's not true. You know, if you, 
if you actually cut people's taxes, they that reduces that that reduces their need for higher wages. And so that's a supply side boost, which actually reduces inflation. Given that you've said the direct opposite of Rishi Sunak, who you know was chancellor until very recently when he talked about tax cuts fueling inflation, has he misunderstood basic economics? What's going on there? Well, I, I don't think his economics on this is, 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 is quite right, you know. I think what, what makes sense in terms of economic management is having a supportive fiscal policy that is related to the business cycle, while at the same time the Bank of England is tasked with the job of, of, of keeping monetary conditions so as to bring down inflation. People are finding these predictions of 18.6% inflation, you know, frankly, terrifying. Um, Tory MP supporting Rishi Sunak says, you know, people will end up on the streets if any of this is, is likely to come to pass. Um, your view, you seem to be thinking that people are panicking. I think that given the powers that government has, that the government has through fiscal policy and through taxes and benefits to, um, to assist the economy, um, the sort of the the idea that British citizens are going to go berserk is frankly insulting to them. Professor Minter, thank you very much. Pleasure.